Welcome to American Dreams. My guest today is Jason Ma. Jason, welcome to today's program. Thank you so much for inviting. It's an honor and pleasure to be here with you, Alan. Well, Jason, you're well thought of and you're well networked also out of Silicon Valley, but can you tell us a little bit about your background, how you got to where you are today? Well, since we have only 30 minutes, I'm going to keep it very short. I've been in tech for 40 years uh, since Berkeley Engineering, 1984. My favorite bad joke is I look like I just graduated high school, but my kids are 20, turning 27 and one is 23, two Gen Z young leaders, uh, two girls. And that's one reason I look uh, uh, like a teenager. Um, and I've been in tech for 40 years, you know, kind of engineering, data scientists. In fact, uh, 40 years ago, we were already talking about AI. Worked for TimeNet, which was a precursor to, a, to the commercial internet. And got into North American technical sales and marketing support. Got into international Asia Pacific sales and marketing and general management. Worked for a bunch of tech companies, all American companies. We all went IPO, got acquired or already public. I did work for Fujitsu for a couple of years multi-billion dollars and learn about the Japanese way of doing things, the bureaucracy, so much fun as a kid. Fast forward, did my own business and then got entrepreneurial, even exited a uh, Chinese tech company. I co-founded two. I would never ever do that anymore, right? Those were different times and co-invested with Tim Draper, a bunch of American VCs and investors. And I exited in a secondary series D, sold my shares, my founder series A shares to the leading VC. Uh, there, who is a Chinese VC. Once again, I won't ever do that again, given today's climate. Uh, and then uh, and then got bit by the entrepreneurial bug uh, uh, in China, co-founded a company and a merch at a uh, tech education, tech SaaS company with an American company that formed my previous education company, pre during post-merger six years. That's where I learned so much about uh, Ivy League, elite college admissions, uh, consulting. Uh, and I was very different as well. I was also a life coach, uh, kind of a uh, executive coach, uh, mindset, soft skills coach. I've been doing that for about 20, 25,000 hours. So I success kind of coaching, mentoring, uh, apply research, writing uh, critically, a clean book called Young Leaders 3.0, wrote for Forbes, went to the Forbes Global CEO Conference eight times, very grateful. Always the worst house in the best neighborhood, right? My joke. And then uh, 3EQ is my little uh, family business. Today I got, besides my family and friends, uh, faith is very important to me. I'm building another very exciting tech company. That thing's gonna probably got well, it's gonna take off like a rocket ship starting this second half. Mid stage, uh, purposefully semi stealth. And my family business, 3EQ, is why you invite me. I'm very big on mentoring, coaching high achievers, teenagers, college kids, high school kids, college kids, all the way to occasional 50 something year old CEO. They say, Jason, here's a check. I'm a student now, right? What I do is that I make people very dangerous in a very good way. How's that? Help them prepare well, achieve the greatest outcomes possible. Clarify that in the life stage, a vertical goal achievement, while horizontally, I hone what I call the 4S and 3EQ. You know, visionary story, uh, you know, uh, visionary story, state, uh, strategies, soft skills, execution ability, and also pragmatic, emotional, social, and leadership intelligence. That's why we're here. Well, I love this, Jason, especially when you're, yeah, you, you've had all this success and then you focus back on this next generation. As you know, we're, we're at a moving river of knowledge and uh, without that follow-up generation, we're in trouble, right? So, yes. so uh, when we look at value systems, uh, you mentioned uh, your faith and your family. What, what is really the most important to you as you put your, your vision out there for life? I'm here, I'm here to uh, love and serve, how's that? And I and I learn and improve and and you know help others grow and succeed, right? Like Jeff Jeff Bezos mentioned, the most important soft skill we should have is intellectual humility. With the humility to always learn, learn aggressively and improve, right? And when you talk to Jamie Dimon these days of uh, J.P. Morgan, he says one thing every speech, right? Learn and learn, learn and learn. Um, I'm just here to love and serve, and uh, to me, the the values. It's kind of like when I coach my students, right? And and uh, I tend to I tend to attract these uh, powerful uh, ultra net worth CEOs as my uh, private client parents, right? I'm not talking about the struggling entrepreneurs. I feel for them, uh, but I'm talking about the successful ones. So it's a centimillionaires, ultra high net worth, because they are very investment minded. They want to get the best achievement, best results, right? That's how we are. We're achievement oriented, but those with a good heart also think long term. 
And I learned from the Chinese, right? I'm Chinese American, integrating the both of both, both, best of both worlds, right? And you know, it's kind of like have a higher arc. What can you do with your your own spirit, your mindset, your soft skills, your inner kind of the strategies, and how well do you execute? Do you serve and solve a real problem that benefits truly, no BS, you know, the target markets that you serve, right? And then, of course, invest massive return more to the investors, right? That's how I think with my tech company, with my with my uh, with my private client uh, parents, uh, students, right? And these are kids that are motivated. The parents want to have Alan. I'm sure you do. You're an expert. You are. You guys are experts in wealth management. You know, multifamily office or not? You know that. What the patriarchs and matriarchs want are peace of mind, relationships, joy. Okay, as part of the health, wealth, happiness equation. Next gen is the most important thing. What I do indirectly greases the path for succession planning, enhances the family and CEO legacies, right? Because I help them achieve greater outcomes. Even the kids already go to the best private school in Atherton, right? I also coach part of the Atherton royalty. And, and at the same time, how do you raise the arc so that the kids going to end up making a lot more money, more joyful, more peace of mind? And, and, and then it's natural for the wealth transfer later on as a byproduct, right? So, so I'm very outcome-focused, purpose-driven, values, principle-based. Very important. Now, if we move into the next 10 leaders, how do you tailor a one-on-one -on -one coaching and membership to meet the needs of the uh, ultra-high net worth individuals, their families, their children? This, that, that's right. a, a mouthful, but... It, yeah. It is, it, Alan, it is so much fun. It is so much fun. It's very, very meaningful. Every individual, every kid, every next gen, whether they're a teenager, 20 something year old, millennials, or 50 something year old, right? But typically, when you talk about next gen, it's more like maybe millennials and Gen Z, but some Gen, gen X in there as well. And and uh, all my Gen X CEO friends, they're all very practical. They're butt kickers. They get things done, right? So a lot of teenagers, they help them get into top schools and all that. Every individual, every family is very different but it's entirely under my framework because nothing beats one-on-one. -on -one. I get to know them so well. My, my goal is to help them clarify, define the greatest, the key, uh, key uh, uh, milestones that they need, right? I, I tell you, Alan, you know, as a trusted third-party advisor, oftentimes your clients probably, they know, but sometimes they don't know what they don't know. You have to beat them, right? Often I find they don't even know that they have to make these decisions until I educate them. And loop them in and they go oh if not you're gonna have massive opportunity losses because the greatest loss is opportunity loss right and i've been seeing that as a pattern right so pattern recognition what works what doesn't work sell, failure successes so it's just one on one i get to know the students and the family real real well and i tell them up front they know that right in fact the parents can enjoy it that students enjoy it. it's like i get to know you as a kid more than your parents know you in some ways why very simple Tweens, teenagers, sometimes young adults, they don't tell your family members everything. Do you think, do you think your kid tell, tell you everything, number one? No. You could be a billionaire, but you're not an expert in parenting or in grooming your kids, right? In some ways, yes, you have them shadow you, teach them some art skills, have them get involved. Absolutely do that. That's part of your responsibility. So, so I come in as a trusted third-party uh, chief mentor, learn so much, right? And then the parents sometimes go, Jason, pss, 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 my kids doesn't listen to me, do this. Got it, right? So I'm kind of a monkey in the middle and gonna help them gel, raise the communication, raise a relationship as well as a byproduct. So I cater to uh, each kid and each uh, student, each family, sometimes even these individual CEOs come to me. It's all very uh, private and personal. And, and you know, these uh, middle-aged people say that, you know, I kind of get to, you know, they know that I know them in some ways more than the partner or the spouse knows them. Because they're not going to tell the spouse and partner everything. The CEO is not going to tell the board everything. You know that. They're lonely at the top. Come on. Is the CEO going to tell the staff everything? Is the CEO going to tell the investors and board every single thing? Things don't work like that, right? So it's my own repertoire. It's my own process, right? I call it the 3Q4S uh, 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 process. So let's move into the uh, your acclaimed author of Young Leaders 3.0 mm. and a Forbes contributor on mentoring young leaders. So... What are the key traits and skill sets that define young leaders today and moving forward into the future? 
I look at it in a couple of concentric circles, right? As an individual, the most important is your spirit in between. And then you have to learn to be even, you know, I'm part of the G20. I'm part of a, I'm a leading member at the B20, which is a G20, think of it as a global advisory council. So I've been there for 10 years, right? There's only a few Americans who, who I've been sitting on a future work, education, employment and skills, a task force a long time on top of my work, writing, speaking and all that. So I see a few things, right? And I kind of you know, help them craft policies, right? What employers look for are employable marketable skills. Now, out of that is really your direction, your your mindset, your strategies, your skills. Now, when it comes to skills and mindset, spirit, your, uh, I would say your resilience, elasticity, uh, your adaptability, agility, very important, especially right now, AI, think about AI as sort of like augmented intelligence as well. You got to keep upgrading, upskilling, reskilling, uh, and then your tenacity, determination in the right path. The worst thing is that you're being tenacious, moving in the wrong path. Then that means opportunity losses for you in the future, right? Along the way, learn to be more compassionate. Compassion is really love, empathy, and action with other people. That's number one. Around that is my uh, soft skill set cornerstone, right? Critical thinking, strategic problem solving. Not many people has got strong critical mesh network thinking. There are a lot of linear thinkers out there. I see that all the time. And I'm sure you read the book Mindset by Carol, uh, by the some professor, right? Growth mindset. I call it growth and contribution mindset, okay? Not just growth mindset. Totally avoid fixed mindset. Sometimes you get fixed in, you know, watching a movie at home, you know, enjoy it. We're fine. But you got to, you have to grow, grow, grow and contribute, right? So your um, the critical thinking, a bit of curiosity, uh, creativity, and certainly communication skills. I'm very big on that. My own children, they communicate super well, top performers, right, at Google, Salesforce, Slack, and graduate from top, top schools as well. And one-on-one um, -on -one conversation is very important. Listening, we got two ears, one mouth, right? Um, public speaking, hyper important. You got to speak real, real well, not like a Biden, right? You have to speak very super well. And you have to, um, you know, write real well as well. First person essay writing. I don't have to teach you third party expository because you learned it from school. Finally, is your team social collaboration skills, right? I would say the top three is critical thinking, communication, leadership skills. Why do I call pragmatic, emotional, social leadership intelligence, not just EQ, which is getting kind of trite? Because in addition to emotion, which is an instant effect of your beliefs and thoughts, right? And your physiology, uh, your your various, uh, you know, kind of an emotional, mental state, then is the social part, the empathy, the compassion, you know, that's social. And then the leadership is more holistic, right? You end up being more impactful, uh, more joyful. You can make a lot more money as well as impact. Does that answer your question? It does. Now, I, I admire you for, you know, how you're, how you're addressing this. You know, when, as one generation that makes the wealth transitions to the next, the next generation, uh, you know, there's always an expectation that the values in the first generation will be carried on to the second. Right. I want I want to go into the uh, as as these value systems are passed on. How can a parent best prepare their children for the challenges that they'll be facing into the future over the next? next generations while enhancing family legacies and succession planning. Right. And I have, I have a zillion case studies for you, but let me, let me make it short. Okay. So once again, think about outcomes, what outcomes are we looking for? Okay. As uh, ultra net worth parents, right? What do we want? You know, of course, business success, uh, our, 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 our position in the ecosystem, though those are important our legacy in the family, inward, outward, and our business success, our growth, and our succession in our family and certainly in our businesses, right? Whether it's a family enterprise or corporate or whatever family office, right? Um, how do we carve that? I would say one thing that I see is that for, you know, there's a, there's a passage in the Bible, right? That it's easier to get a wealthy, to get a camel to thread through the eye of a needle than to get a wealthy person to go to heaven. Think about that. So, so what does a help, what does a, a good hearted, wealthy person need to do in addition to your good deeds and to your good business is really to align more with what aligns with mother nature, if you will. 
part of that is only to make sure to check our big ego and pride on a shelf within our family. I see this on the inside and I see this all over, right? And and I love I love everyone. I love the, you know, I love the I love the uh yeah, I love people. What parents need to do is to be open in addition to your uh chief investment officer in your family offices, right? To your senior executive staff. Uh, or to other people to help you. Also, think about getting trusted third-party uh, uh, help for your kid. For example, I coach a mentor. I joke uh, part of the Atherton royalty. The kid already goes to top private school, right? But they come to me because they they know that. Oh my God, hey Jason, even the counselor and a, and a teacher and staff just don't have your skills, right? Because I bring a lot of pragmatism in addition to nurturing strategy, uh, you know, vision and teach them skills and groom their story, groom their character, uh, groom their story, and make sure the production goes well. So it's kind of like making a movie. Uh, Oscars yesterday was entertaining, right? A movie is about characters. It's about story and production. The quality of each component that's interconnected has got to be great. Otherwise, you're not going to make a $500 million, a billion dollar blockbuster movie. It's that simple. Without the right director, you're not going to be able to do that, right? You're going to self-direct. You're going to limit your box office success. So I come in, I joke that I come in as a bit of a Steven Spielberg or Christopher Nolan or James Cameron uh, personally to be the outsourced chief mentor, right? With the next gen, sometimes with the leading gens as well. Sometimes parents come to me, they say, Jason, teach us to be better parents or guide us to communicate better with their kid. We're struggling with communicating in college or whatever, right? Like, you know, so, so I would say, um, prioritize the soft side just as much as you prioritize your typical wealth preservation, your wealth enhancement, tax savings, and get a discount on a yacht. You know, those things are very important, right? But prioritize the soft side. Think about that. When you are about sitting in a hospital, you might be six foot under. Who do you want around you in the hospital bed? Do you want people that love you? Or do you want your relatives that want your money? Is that simple? The answer is clear. You know, Jason, I, I love I love to get into some of your experiences that you've had working with your clients. Um, are there any particular stories that have stood out over the years? I'm going to reverse engineer that. I'll give you a couple of cases here. Um, with a with a Gen X, a forty something year old CEO, and go down to the high school kids. How's that, right? So one time I spoke in, I get invited to, to speak. I'm very honored and privileged. I get invited to speak quite a bit in a variety of family office investor CEO forums, right? And of course, the B20, G2, G20 forum, I, when, I, when I voice things, they take notes. Um, so I spoke in this family office uh, investor event in Dubai uh, and Riyadh a couple of times for them. Second time, suddenly the CEO of the single family office, she runs a show, right? She go, Jason, optimize me, uh, maximize me. Okay, here's a check. I'm a student now. That was fun. That was okay. Sure, I didn't know that. <laughs> she worked me. Okay, she kind of plugged me in different panels and all that about direct investing, what's going on in Silicon Valley, certainly impact, philanthropy, next gens, uh, all sorts of things. Right. I came back speaking again about global geopolitical turbulence and implications in Savannah last week, and it did the same thing in Dallas. So not just ex- next gen stuff and from global business. I'm very big on geopolitical things. Right. It's like massive a round of applause and a lot of people came up to me they said oh holy crap they you know they loved it right so back to how it worked that's one example and that example is an investor friend of mine in his 50s a small ceo i introduced a deal to him i said hey i'm very involved with this deal right and he said no and in a 20 minute debrief phone call with him i discovered that hey dude here's your problem sometimes alan you know with alpha male men i tend to be more blunt with them directly right with women, I'm very polite. With girls, I'm very polite, right? Based on who you talk to. I said, dude, here's your problem. This part of your mindset, this part of your soft skills, it's a little bit mucked up. You don't fix it, you don't upgrade it, it's going to limit you. Because this interconnected that, that interconnected that, everything's interconnected. Okay? Wake up. Now, today, um, I tend to be uh, uh, much more selective today because I could take on only a handful, handful of clients at a time. One of them, it's a beautiful uh, family, Midwest, Caucasian, and then, in fact, uh, uh, the Bras family, uh, I brought in the mom. We did a show w- with a family business autocast last week while I was in a conference speaking. <laughs> I had to step out. We talked about family business. 
And she runs a single family office, conservative family in Midwest and beautiful child. Uh, she's now a college or junior. I'm helping her prepare to get into a certain type of grad school, right? In the meantime, the parents want me to really beef up her confidence, her communications, her soft skills, her force and three EQ. I said, Jason, of course, you're totally expert in getting kids into top elite colleges and, and grad schools, right? But what I like about you is, once again, your full S and three EQ. That's very, very powerful and unique, right? And we're having a blast. I've been coaching for a couple of quarters. We have so much fun. And the kids, every time we end a meeting, say, Mr. Ma, Mr. Ma, let's book our next meeting, right? They're very excited to see me. I'm very excited to see them. They see my love. They feel my love, right? So that's a college kid. Um, I'm coaching another college kid. One thing that I noticed, Alan, is that a lot of the wealthy parents is that kids got kids are in middle school and high school. And a lot of parents only think about college admissions. They think about, sometimes I feel that it's your pride talking. Of course, of course, a lot of parents want their kids to go to Stanford, go to Harvard and all that. You're always like, oh, hey, my kid goes to Harvard. My kid goes to Stanford, right? Go, go, go to Wharton. I mean, my kids went to top school. So I, I got a little bit of that in the past. But a lot of them are a little bit short-sighted, though. Because a lot of kids, once they go to these very highly competitive colleges and universities, like Ivy League, Stanford, MIT, Berkeley, and I see it all the time. I got kids in all these top schools, right? You know, some of them are so stressed. Some of them are so high in anxiety. Some, some depressed, a few even worse, okay? And then once that happens, the families go quiet. They don't talk about that. That's why even in high school, I'm very big. Of course, you're talking to the best of the best coach of coaches, mentor of mentors, when it comes to college planning, application, admissions, process, guidance. I do it all the time, right? It's like your story, your character, and later on your essays, your rec letters, your interviews, and all the things going on, all the complexity, right? But I'm just as big on honing the 4SN3 EQ. So once you go to college, once you enter the work world, you are more relaxed, you're more confident, you're more skillful, you rise up faster, become a top performer sooner, you make a lot more money, become a leader. That's higher arc, right? Then you have better peace of mind. That's how I think, right? So one kid, in fact, I discovered that he's autistic. Now he's in Carnegie Mellon as a freshman, right? He loves it. Yesterday I had to meet with him again, help them uh, pretty much uh, choose the best optimal major and help them with academics. And I talk about activities with my kids all the time, guide them to build the story, of course, internship, right? Score the best internship, maybe apply research. It all depends on the kid. And now he's into CS and AI. And then another kid could be into vet. Another kid could be pre-med. Another kid could be more in social sciences, right? Uh, now, back in high school kids, my own children, uh, one is now a Google senior software engineer. And then one uh, one is now a Salesforce security engineer, but she graduated at Wharton. Shuma Kung Lao, activity leader as well. Uh, former president, uh, co-president of the Wharton FinTech Group. So a student and a jock, I call it, right? When you talk to her, she's only 4'11". I joke with her. I joke with people. It's like, <clears throat> my younger daughter looks like she's still in middle school. She's so short, but she's actually a 23-year-old, and she hits me all the time, right? So we, we joke around with each other uh, <laughs> with, with, my, with my kid. And, you know, they went through the struggles, of course, but what... And one, one example for you is that my younger daughter, in my fourth article, why to start preparing for college in sixth grade. I know we have limited time, so I'm speaking in a rapid fire fashion. Um, you know, in my fourth article, why to start preparing for college in sixth grade, I do not write about academics. I write about shaping habits. And, and, and back when she was in age 11, I noticed that, you know, just like a lot of kids, right, being seduced, being deceived by all these social media, device media. So she was spending dozens of hours on social media, on device. So I said, oh my God, I have to fix this, right? Because back then I had a deal with my wife that at age 13, I would start taking her as my student. Of course, father first, right? One on one. But at age 11, I said, honey, it's not working. She said, get her into your, 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 your mentoring program, right? So I started coaching her and help her convert from a weakness to a neutral, neutral to a strength. And then she's on her own, right? Strength to super strength. And by the time in high school, 12 APs, valedictorian, got admitted early decision to Penn Warden, even said no to Harvard twice, said no to Harvard twice. They said, okay, Warden, I made a decision to go to Warden ED, and as usual, an active leader, right? And then all sorts of things, knows how to communicate, learn well, keep honing for it, for and 3 EQ. Do kids go through issues? Absolutely. Once you go to college, you know, kids are kids, right? It's like all over the map. But 
But what I'm very uh, grateful for and so I fight about is that my own kids plus a small army out there, a whole bunch of kids, they are happy, compassionate young leaders, you know, with better peace, better confidence, and are making probably a lot more money than other kids. <laughs> so those are a few examples for you. Well, Jason, it's been an honor having you with us today. If a person wants to reach out for mentorship or more information about your Model 3 EQ, how would they go ahead and do that? Um, thank you for asking. Just go to my website, 3EQ, uh, T-H-R-E-E-EQ.com. Everything's there. Uh, feel, free to, feel free to please uh, LinkedIn me, but cite that we met with uh, Alan in this, uh, you know, in this show so that I could search and, and know where, you know, where you come from and uh, happy to have a conversation with good people. Thank you. Appreciate you being with us today, Jason.